Hi guys, I'm Andrew Davidson. And Shanine. And welcome back to another As Per My Ability video. Today's video, we're going to be doing a top five for everyone tonight. And the top five category that we've chosen to do is our top five cooperative games. Now for those of you that aren't incredibly aware, the cooperative game genre is one of my favorites mostly because of the storytelling aspect and the narrative aspect. Usually those come about by having players working together and uh, going through a story together. This was an incredibly hard list for both Shanine and myself to do as we had just lists and lists and lists of games that we enjoy that are cooperative. So when we talk about our games on this list, we just picked five pretty much but there's a bunch of them out there. So there wasn't really a, a great way for us uh, to do any ranking. So for those of you, a cooperative game is a non-competitive game. And when I say non-competitive or cooperative, I'm talking cooperative in the full sense or what they would call a fully cooperative game. There are some semi-cooperative games, uh, such as Fury of Dracula, Spectre Ops, and um, like Dead of Winter where there, there's some traitor aspect and things where not everybody is working towards the common good. But leaving that aside, there are some fully cooperative games where everyone is on the same team. They are all trying to beat the game or the scenario within the game. And so the game has a way of work, how it works as far as um, uh, flipping over cards, moving monsters around, or having some bad things happen. And so a cooperative game is a really great game to get people into games because as I've done in a video before that you can check out about feeling dumb when games, this really mitigates like cooperative, cooperative games really mitigate the fact of like people being like, I don't know what to do on my turn. I feel stupid. I feel awkward. Maybe there's some anxiety going on. Well, cooperative games are really great because it's like, hey, you can pat him on the shoulder and be like, we're on the same team. I can help you. And then you can just learn through playing and then they'll kind of get into it. And you'll see, you'll see the wheel start spinning in a lot of people's heads, which is a great moment when you're a gamer. And so cooperative great games are really great. A lot of them are lightweighted, meaning complexity for families. Some of them are a little bit more on the, the heavy aspect. So I'm going to talk about how I organized my top five and then we'll go over to Shanine and she can kind of talk about hers so again to repeat myself there are a lot of cooperative games I think I had a list of about 13 that I really enjoy that I would recommend to a lot of people so when I had to take five out of the 13 it was like how do I just arbitrary decide this one or that one the ones that I played the most this one, how do I even rank them from five to one? Because they all kind of change just depending on my mood. Because cooperative games have different feels to them, whether if it's a deck builder, whether if it's a story expo exploration type of game. And so they all have different types of feels. So how I did my five is I started with my five to one. My five is a cooperative game that is quite complex. And as you move towards number one, I, I went for more like family weight, easy to learn, easy to play, um, just easy to more accessible for like newer games or new, sorry, newer gamers and easy to learn and stuff like that. So my five to one is going to start off like super complex and heavy, probably harder games to get into if you're not into games already. Uh, big rule books, lots of things, you know, probably a long play uh, time. And then down to number one is what I think would be an easier game to pick up if you're new. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's how I put mine together. Shanine, why don't you go ahead and jump in and talk about how you formulated uh, all of these great cooperative games that we've been talking about. Well, it was so hard to do. Um, I could have had an easily top 10, not a problem of just cooperative games is so great. Um, but I kind of went with mine. Uh, I did more of a, 
Um, like I went more of games that some, they're, they're kind of a diverse games. I didn't just go with one specific mechanic. I tried to mix it up with a couple of different mechanics. Um, so right. I, I would hit different areas because some people like deck builders and some people are more yeah. like, I would rather have like, uh, like a, a area place or area, area control game or so yeah. I kind of, kind of picked different different uh, mechanisms and within the co-op within and the co-op and there's a lot of cooperative deck builders out there I mean take your pick from all the different themes and there's there are a lot of as I said earlier on in a minute ago there's a lot of campaign storybook sort of cooperative games that you can pick from uh, mm -hmm. as well so it's really just down to your flavor as far as what kind of games you like um, yeah. to play cooperatively. Um, they're not all the same. They do provide a different feeling. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are absolutely brutal. Some of them are very difficult. Some of them are easy that you can make a little harder. You know, there's cooperative games are really versatile in mm -hmm. what your, what your flavor is, like what you like yeah, to play. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, from, zombies in the middle of winter to you know a bunch of uh cdc workers and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know traveling the world and so there's really a lot to cooperative games so why don't we go ahead and just get started i guess uh, All right, we'll start like off fun. with your number five shanine and then we'll just okay. ping pong back and forth my number five is I'm going to call it Escape Room the Card Game. It's a cooperative game that you can uh, play together with uh, your family. Um, it's one to six players, and it's called Unlock. It comes in many different scenarios and many different um, themes. Uh, and it's pretty much... A card game that you're searching for through the scenes to solve mysteries and com combining objects to get to the next card and solving puzzles but you can sit around with a whole bunch of people and like look at all the cards and go oh hey oh there's a six in there oh, I bet you need to take six card because the cards all have different numbers and letters in them they correspond to what you're looking for either in the scene itself in the card or um, you combine things, like combine pieces together, and there's puzzles, and it's so fun. Um, you can play it one player. I've played solo before. Um, it's, they're so fun and entertaining, especially if you like escape rooms, but you don't want to like go to the escape room or it's too much of a, of a, like it's too big of an experience. You're like, I don't think I can do escape rooms, but grab a couple friends, grab one of the scenarios, little cards, and sit at a table and yeah it's it's so fun so a few things of note on unlock which you and i have both played um some positives for those of you that want to check out unlock and see what it is some positives is that it uses an app on your phone so it's an app integrated game and that's great um the second positive is there's a lot of them out there i even lost track at first i was keeping count of like, oh, because they come out in threes, as you saw mm -hmm. on, the, on the box, there's kind of like three sets. Um, there's a lot now. I lost track. And so the bad, the downside, well, sorry, the, another positive is, is that it's, it's a deck of cards. And so when you put the cards like together, you figure out the puzzle or the story and you go through it, you kind of just reset the cards in a specific order. And then you can give it to uh, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a family member or something and um just pass it along and so yes it's a game you probably will play once uh, most likely unless if you want to put it up on the shelf for a couple of years and completely forget about it uh you're probably just going to play it once and that'll be it but the, the good thing is that you can you can kind of gift it to someone else mm -hmm. and anyone yeah. with a smartphone can just play it it's a deck of cards um there's 24 uh, scenarios. I just looked it up. Oh, okay. There's 24. Yeah. I stopped counting at like, I think maybe nine. 
And so I have a bunch of them. Shanine has a bunch of them. We've played a bunch of them together. The mm-hmm. downside is that they're, they come in diff, like difficulty ratings and the, mm-hmm. the hard ones are really hard. Yeah, they'll, they'll <laughs> challenge you, that's I'm, for sure. I'm just too dumb for some, <laughs> some of those things. Um, I don't consider myself a puzzler or an escape room aficionado or whatever. And so I actually have more fun just kind of watching and sitting and like sipping my tea and like watching people like just do them. Um, I have more fun doing that, but there, there are some good ones. Unlock is good because it's just so simple. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. I agree 100%. Like you said, yeah, yeah they're one-time plays, but they're so easy to give to somebody and then they can play it and give to somebody else. They can just kind of keep going. And if they really like it, like I said, there's 24 different scenarios that you can try. So yeah, that is cool. my number five. That's a good one. So, um, uh, as a little break in between our, our games, because we got started, Shanine and I were talking before we started vil- filming about crossovers and stuff like that, where I originally said that we would not have any crossovers because I kind of went off the beaten path, you know, trying to pick things that most people wouldn't really go to right away as a go-to, or I was thinking about Shanine and like her list and like what her go-to thing was. And so now after kind of talking a little bit with her, with her, excuse me, I think we might have some crossover. So I'm changing my opinion. I know that doesn't matter because that was done off camera, but I'm saying it now we might have, um, we might have one crossover, but probably not. So moving on with my number five, and again, keeping in mind the framework of how I put together. So my number five is, on the complex side of the cooperative spec- spectrum. This uh, cooperative game is a game that I've played quite a few times and it is absolutely brutal. It's super fun. It comes with like six different scenarios, I believe. Don't quote me on that because I don't think, I don't even think I've gotten past the first scenario, but it's all about survival and keeping yourself fed it's called robinson caruso um, by ignacy chevichek and published by portal games and so in robinson caruso you are basically playing the uh novel robinson caruso you are abandoned you and your friends are playing characters that are shipwrecked and abandoned on an island and you need to survive Um, Each scenario has its own specific little thing, like flavor to it. I'm not going to really comment on that as I've just tried to play the (laughs) play and fail many, many times. The, the opening basic scenario where you just, you have to have wood to be able to build up a shelter, but then you've got to have food. So then you got to go hunting so you can get animal meat. But if you find the wrong animal, they'll end up killing you unless you can build a gun somehow. But a gun means you got to invent some of these, some of these other things. And then, Oh no, the storm comes in and you roll the storm dice and that gets all of your wood wet. So now you can't burn any fire or, Sometimes it's cold and so you freeze and you take some damage and it's, you just, you die in that game. (laughs) You just, you just basically, it's a struggle to stay alive. You're against the elements, you're against the animals. One of the cool things that I like about the game that they kind of changed up and mitigated the card aspect is there's a game called First Martian that is designed, same designer, same company. Um, where they used an app instead. But in Robinson Crusoe, what's kind of cool, narratively speaking, is you'll draw a card that would be an event card and it'll say, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to eat the berries or do you not? And like, if you do, then you shuffle the card back into the deck. And so when it gets pulled the second time, then something bad will happen. So it's like, if I eat the berries so that I don't die of starvation because you die very easily in this game. Yes. And that's great because I don't want to die. But then four turns later, you pull that card and it's like, yeah, they were kind of poisonous and they make your stomach upset and you have these other bad things, these repercussions that happen. So it's kind of a, what do you want? Do you want something good now and bad later? Or do you just not want anything good or bad at all? Cause you can choose not to eat the berries. That's really interesting uh, set up from a narrative speak uh, choice um, lens. And so, 
My number five is a Robinson Crusoe by Ignacy Chevichek and Portal Games. Good game. God, how many times have we played that? And I think we've won once, maybe, mm-hmm. when we've played it one time. time. I know we played it 10 times for sure, maybe 11 or 12 times, and we won one time. Yeah, really? and, yeah, and I've, I've played with uh, I played with groups of other people, like without Shanine and stuff, and they've really enjoyed it, but it is – it's number five for a reason. So everyone keep that in mind when you're thinking about these, these lists or thinking about these games or maybe looking them up on Amazon. Robinson Crusoe, while there, there are watch it played videos or like gameplay videos to learn it, it is, it is a slog to learn. There's a lot of different phases and there's a lot of like this does this and this does this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of rules, which is why it's my number five. But that doesn't mean that it's a super fun game. And there's, fun. If, you, if you buy the game, it, like I said, it comes with a bunch of different scenarios that you can do. You can go <laughs> online. You can download extra scenarios that people have created. For you Lost fans out there, I'm speaking to you, there is a Lost scenario that you can use for Robinson Crusoe. And then there's also um, the Mystery Tales uh, expansion that gives kind of a campaign to it which I have not played yet, but uh, plan to play at some point, hopefully this year. And so there's lots of fun stuff. If Robinson Crusoe seems to uh, meet your fancy, there's lots of, lots of stuff for it for you to play. So that's my number five, Robinson Crusoe. So fun. I really like that one too. It's brutal. It's, I know, but it's so good. There's something about, like, there's something about, having these people and your characters and they give you a picture and you can be a guy or you can be a, the female version. And you're like, I have a special ability. And it's all about like, we're part of a tribe and I'm really good. Cause I used to be a cook so I can do this and do that. And you really kind of get into these characters and then just to watch them go like, I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm dying. I got hurt by an, uh, an al- like an alligator attack or getting food is so oh, no. good. Oh, got to feed them every time. Oh, people are dying. My person, ugh, they starve to death. It's, just it's like, morning. Oh. We need more food. We're out of food. And then like a storm rolls in and gets yep. everybody soaking wet. And it's like we can't, we freeze because we don't have any dry wood to like heat us. No, I giggle at the berries, <laughs> the scenario you said, because that's actually something that's happened to us. We're like, oh, cool. A little bit later, pull the card. Oh, the berries are poisoned. Yeah. That's one that I remember. You lose two hearts or whatever it was. So despite uh, Shanine and I's little banter here of, of our frustration, <laughs> we're kind of just getting out our frustration for the game. It's it is, so good. It is fun. I, it is, I yep. do recommend it. If you have the, the willpower, the brain power to kind of knuckle down, learn a lot of the little intricate rules and stuff. Um, it's on my list for a reason. So well, let's go on to number four. All right. Um... My number four in this game, your four heroes that need to rob a mall and get equipment so you can go on your next adventure. However, there's no talking in this game. Only movement. There's time, and it's called Magic Maze. This game is, it's by Dude Games and Casper Lep, and it's awesome. It's so fun and crazy, because you can't say anything, but you have to get through this maze using just, like, actions, like, hey, little, little pogs, or what do they call them? <laughs> hey, little, pawns. We'll call them pawns. Pawns, that's what it is, sorry. Yeah. And... You have to, like, I can move this way. And if somebody's stuck and you're like, um, I can go, you have to get their attention by using the big master paw, pong, pawn. can't say that word tonight. Pawn. <laughs> pawn. And, like, tap it. Like, hey, buddy, I got that move. Yeah, move but you can't piece. say, like, hey, you can't say, you hey, can't buddy. Say you just have to you be, like. like <laughs> <laughs> Pick, you have to move that, you have to, because there's one person that takes, the, there's tiles, and one person is in charge of placing the tiles, yeah. so you have to, like, get that one person to move a tile, so you can, it's, it's so much fun, it's amazingly fun, I know that, like, we played a couple nights, 
a couple times at, at, a, at a gaming event and it's it's crazy fun when you have people standing around a table like it's just it's fun <laughs> i can't i can't explain it more yeah we've it. <laughs> we've had we've had times where people come up to us and they're like what are you guys doing what is this and, and you can't talk so we're just like Yep. <laughs> like go away because you are Shanine failed to mention you are racing against a sand timer. Oh yeah. And so you're, it's a real time game where you don't wait for your turn. You just kind of move and go and go. And so for someone to be like, "What are you playing? What does that do? What is this?" And you're just like, I, "Don't bother me right now." <laughs> I only mention that not because I'm like some disgruntled gamer. Um, I just mentioned because it's happened a couple of times. Before. Yeah. It's hard when you just want to be like, oh, we're playing Magic Maze and you want to tell them, but you're like. And as you're telling them, someone's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do something. Because <laughs> I can only move the pawns this way and Shanine can only move them this way and yep. Bill can only move them like this way. And so like, I can't touch the pawn and move them. I have to wait for someone else to move them because you're kind of, it's like she said, it's a maze. And so you're trying to go through this maze and go up and down <laughs> and race against the clock trying to get people in steal their stuff mm -hmm. and get out the game has a bunch of different scenarios that adds some modular type stuff and some extra like special abilities and things like that mm -hmm. but the first time that i ever played this game being someone that's very kind of anxious prone and that does not at least back in the day probably two years ago did not like real-time games. I still don't really find myself really fancying real-time games. And what I mean by real-time is, like I said, you don't wait for your turn. You just, like, go, you know? And so first time I played this, I almost had, like, a panic attack. It was just like, I'm trying to, okay, move. And there's multiple pawns. And so you're trying to look, survey the whole board and be like, okay, I can only move them this way. Okay, this guy needs to move here here oh no but cindy moved them back why why did she move them back i'll move them up no she moved them back and like you guys aren't on the same lay, yeah. like wavelength because cindy wants to move like around this way to get this ability or something and you can't talk about it and there was a moment in my very first game where that big pawn was just being like just knocked in front of me and i looked and i froze and i was like i don't know what move i can take and if, and i looked up and it was like all eyes, all eyes on me. And I'm just like, <laughs> and then bang, 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 bang. I was like, ah, ah, ah. And so finally we ran out of time and it was like, oh, we, oh, okay. We ran out of time. And I was like, I can't do this. I can't play this game. And so the next game, cause obviously they're like, let's try it again. It was all of our first time playing. So they were like, let's try it again. And I was like, I got to sit this out. I think, I believe I sat out the next game. And then jumped in for the third game. And by the time I, I was played it the second time, did I love it? Ah, I wouldn't say I love, loved it at that moment. Um, but I definitely was like, okay, I'm getting this. You know, I'm getting there. The anxiety is like coming down. Because the first time was, oh, it was a very bad gaming experience. Um, this one was on my list, actually. Um, not, not my top five, but I mean, my huge list that I just kind of put out, um, magic maze was on there. So definitely a good pick, not one that I picked from mine, but, uh, this is, um, a good one because they have magic maze. I don't know what it's called. Janine, if you do like magic maze for kids. I don't it's, really, I didn't even know that. It's got That's bigger pieces and bigger tiles. Oh, cool. it's like little size. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like XXL, Magic Maze XXL or something. And it's, oh, it's cutesier cool. and it's for, it's for kids and stuff like that. Um, so oh, that's, that's a good one for, for kids to be able to like work cooperatively, mm -hmm. of course. That's what yeah. we're talking about and getting these um, objectives met, but without, without talking. You have to just be able to figure out what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it was really good. It was on my list. So good pick. Really good pick. Um, we'll go on to my number four, um, which is the latest edition in my list, putting it together. I had my list together and then I kind of like swapped out. So this is another 
quite complex game uh, at my number four. And the reason why I put it in is because it is, it's got to be on my list. It wasn't originally, and I'm glad I went back and re-looked at it, re-examined what I had and put it on because there's no reason for it not to be. And I'm sure Shadeen's going to be able to just pick exactly what it is because it was the first game that I ever bought. It was the first game that I ever fell in love with. It was the first game that I sat down and just played for hours and hours and hours and ended up giving away a copy and buying new copies so that I had fresh cards and, you know, cards that weren't bent and everything and have upgraded and things like that. And so I am glad that I took out what I originally had and figured for nostalgic purposes, and it does meet the requirement. It's a, co- it's a complex game. It's a cooperative game. It's called Arkham Horror. Um, this particular version, I need to say just really quick, this particular version, it's by Fantasy Flight Games, and this is the third edition, so not the edition that I originally bought like 10 years ago when I played the snot out of it. That would have been the second edition. I have since uh, gone on to get the third edition of um, Arkham Horror. So Arkham Horror is the Arkham Horror game. I mean, it's what started all of these Lovecraftian, like Arkham Horror, the card game, and Elder Sign, and The Final Hour, and all, all those like Arkham games like that. This is the first one. Granted, it's the third edition, but it was the first game that I bought. It was one that I played with my partner at the time. And we just loved it, loved it, loved it. We played it all night, all day. We would leave our game set up on the floor. um, And we would sleep and then, like, wake up a little bit later and go back to playing it again. We went through all of the ancient ones in the the box. And then we looked up artwork. This is a funny story. We looked up artwork um, of ancient ones from the expansions because some people, you know, they take, like, a screenshot of like the ancient ones and we would sit and take a sheet of paper and we would like draw the stats and write down everything from the image so that we could have our own sheet of paper with the written in information to play with an expansion uh ancient one so in arkham horror for those of you that haven't heard me talk about arkham horror at all and i talk about it a lot it's Placed in the H.P. Lovecraft universe. H.P. Lovecraft was a writer, American writer during the 20s, who wrote horror stuff about uh, these elder ones or ancient ones from another dimension trying to get into our world, open up gates and come into our world and kill people and ravage, kind of end of the world type thing. A lot of this weirdness happens around Arkham, Massachusetts, which is Arkham horror. Arkham is not a actual town it's a fictitious uh town but it takes place in arkham massachusetts and that is exactly what this particular game is is set it's set inside the town where you have monsters popping up you have ghouls and baddies and cooperatively you're working together to try to uncover some clues to be able to seal off gates and stop things from coming into your world and destroying your world like cthulhu um, is one of the, the main big baddies. So if you've ever seen Cthulhu or heard that term Cthulhu or someone with like an ironic Cthulhu t-shirt or like whatever, that that's what we're talking about. We're talking about Arkham Horror when we talk about Cthulhu. And so it's a complex game. It's number four. It's probably right up there with Robinson Crusoe. It takes a long time to play. It takes quite a bit to get used to for setup. And um, the actions actually aren't so bad in it in comparison to Robinson Crusoe. The actions are just like, you just, you move, you do this or you do this. But learning how the game flows and how to set things up and how to like explore the different tiles and stuff like that. Things I won't really go into, but it is um, on this list basically because it's the first game I bought. It's what got me into gaming. And so I now have the third edition. I just recently purchased it. And so my number four is Arkham Horror, the board game. Third edition. I figured there was going to be an Arkham Horror 
appearance on the list. I just kind of kind of had a feeling there was going to be an Arkham Horror appearance. You probably weren't thinking mm-hmm. the board game, though. I wasn't thinking the board game. You're right. Yeah. For sure. I wasn't thinking the board game. So kind of that one surprised me. I figured Arkham Horror, but the board game kind of got me. So I, I thought for sure it was going to be um, the card yeah. game. Yeah. So for those, for those of you kind of watching, um, I play pretty much every Arkham game under the sun, except for the final hour. That's one that I have not played. And the only reason I haven't played it, not because I haven't had a chance to buy it. I've had plenty of chances to buy it, but there's been some reviews that I've seen that are just like, yeah, it didn't really quite hit the mark. So that's the only one that I haven't played, but I, I've played pretty much everything that fantasy flight has released. It's been Arkham horror related from, the card game to the dice game called Elder Sign to the board game, which I just held up a minute ago. Um, I've played it. I played them all. I enjoy them all, especially the card game, which we might be talking about later. (laughs) Well, the board game, I know I played the first edition and the third edition. I think. Yeah, no, the second, played, second and the third. The second and the third, okay. Yeah, the yep. first first edition came out by a different company. Gosh, I don't, I don't want to say a date. Maybe in the eighties, something like that, a long time ago. And then Fantasy Flight picked it up and they put out mm-hmm. what they called the second edition in two thousand and seven, somewhere around there, two thousand six, two thousand seven. And then it just built on expansion, 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 expansion until mm-hmm. just about a year ago, maybe two years. Um, they put out the third edition and it took me up until just a couple of months ago to actually break down and be like, I'm getting the third edition, even though I don't play it a whole lot because I've played the second edition mm-hmm. a whole bunch. Like I said, back in the day, we were playing a bunch of it. I still am like, I just want to have it in my collection and i want to see what they do with the third edition with the updated artwork and the updated like mechanics and stuff because it's not a board so much anymore as mm-hmm. it is tiles but anyways that's probably beyond the scope of um what we're really talking about but that's my number what was that four it's arkham yeah, it's the, horror the I, board game very fun to play and, the, and like they said it is a long game you're right there's no doubt about it there's, it's a super long game um so like if you want to play Make sure you have a good afternoon to play yep. it because it can range, you know, a good two, three hours to play it for sure. I'd say um, three hours, it, definitely. Yeah, it, it, but, it was really fun. But Robinson Crusoe and my Arkham Horror, both two games that are, that are really long and complicated, mm-hmm. but like really fun if, if that's oh, yeah, what definitely. tickles your fancy. If you want something that's more deep and thematic where all the mechanisms make sense and there's lots of rules and lots of little things as to how do I start a fire or okay that makes Mm -hmm. sense because I need like something that sparks and some wood you know everything's very thematic and so these are the games for you my top my five and my four from here on out we're going to start just getting a little more basic I guess well maybe Maybe yours. Well, I, maybe. I think maybe my top one might be a little complex, but all right. So my number three yeah, is uh, it's a it's a deck builder game. I, as a mechanic, enjoy deck builders. In fact, um, I was brought into the ha- the hobby by a deck builder. It was the one game that caught my attention, and I was like, oh, this is so cool different game different not not the game that i'm pulling out because it's not it wasn't a cooperative game but um this one is and it is super fun it's super heavy uh (laughs) and if you like harry potter you may want to try harry potter that hogwarts battle it's a cooperative deck building game where you're fighting villains and you're fighting you know, the big baddies, Voldemort and um, all the rest of them. I'm not very good with the characters, uh, but um, it plays two to four. Um, it's just, you know, you're building your deck to buy more cards, to get more abilities, to be able to battle more with the, your experience and your influence and you, know, you have you know, villains that range from you know easy to hard and 
you as co- collective are trying to beat all the, you know, at the very end, of course, Voldemort's. Um, and it's it's so much fun. It's it's so much fun. It even came out with there's an expansion. Um, and I don't remember the name of the expansion. But it's, oh, it's, it's, it's about, yeah, creatures. Yeah. A- animals and creatures or something. I know it adds the... Oh, it's like the, the beastly box of beasts or something like that. Something... Like that. It's fun with or without the expansion. Um, expansion is yeah. super hard. Yeah, it is, but it's still fun. And like, if playability is awesome. I you just play it. You can reset it up. You don't. It's not like a legacy game where, or you know, stuff that's consumable. The playability is fun. I know. Um, we've played a couple times with a couple different groups of people. I know you've played a few times with some other people and it's it's a solid deck builder game it's not super hard um it's easy to learn if you're not a big gamer it's super easy to catch on to yeah. um i yeah i like it i i i bring it out i've got my mom to play it and my mom is not a gamer so to get her to play any type of game is a miracle like, so that's why it's my number three because it's it's fun, it's easy to learn, and it's a deck builder. So, Shaneen, what is the gimmick about this game? About yeah, playing? About play, Oh no! Like, what is the <laughs> what is the gimmick about playing through this game? I'm. Uh, I don't know. So okay, so we're playing. Guess what's inside Davidson's head? Um, yeah, definitely. When you buy this, when you buy this game, it's not a game that you just set up, and it's the same game every time. You progress through every book in the uh, in the series, and so you play through basically what you would say levels for video game people. And so, like the first level slash movie slash book sets up like oh. with certain cards, and then you unlock the second box, and then you unlock the third box. So it comes with these sealed boxes that you play through the movie. So when you play um, Hogwarts Battle, you start off very young without a lot of special abilities, APMAs, that we like to call them here as per my ability. And then you start to get stronger as you open up box two, three, four, five. And then when you get to seven, which is, you know, everyone knows the Deathly Hollows, you've got, you know, your character has grown up. You've got a uh, a more recent picture of them and more abilities and stuff. So this game is not a game that you buy like Monopoly where you just set up and play and set up and play. You actually will play through a bunch of scenarios. So that's the gimmick uh, behind this game. That's what got me anyways. I was like, oh, cool. You You're can... playing through the movies. That's that's basically it. Yeah, you yeah. can play through all like the movies. And like, and oh, you... who's the Sorry. bad guy in the third one? Mm-hmm. And so like the, the big baddie and you have to kill all these baddies and it does introduce some new mechanisms i wouldn't necessarily call it a big like reveal um but there are some a few mechanisms that get introduced with like boxes and stuff like beyond the scope of what we're talking about but this was also on my uh list and or my short list i should say and the reason why is because this is this okay let's listen there's lots of deck builders, cooperative deck builders out there. There's lots. I mean, Shani and I were just talking about like the legendary system, which I mm-hmm. own like five of them, I think. So many different brands. But what made me pick this one and not uh, James Bond or not Marvel Legendary or not X Files or Aliens or whatever is that this game is purely 100% cooperative and it feels amazing when you get to play that Mm -hmm. support character that plays cards it's like everyone draw a card everyone draw another card or like i heal everyone too or like you're about to Mm -hmm. die so i'm going to play this card i heal you too and the synergy that you get and the the back and forth to be able to be like i'm a support person and it feels pretty god dang good am i killing all the villains you know because there are people out there that would be like i want to hit hard I want mm-hmm. to be able to be a tank. And it's like, you can do that too. But not doing that and just supporting everyone else, it's very satisfying, at yeah, least absolutely. for me. And that just goes to my gamer type because my gamer type is, 
I usually fall on support. And then my secondary is like, okay, if you want me to be a brick shit house, like I can just hit hard. But I usually, usually will try to be some kind of a support kind of in the background, like helping people do what they need to do. And that's great about the game. It's awesome because it's just as rewarding. There are a lot of games out there that aren't that rewarding because you don't get to do a whole lot where you affect the whole table. Some games you can affect the person to your left or right. Oh, hey, you draw another card. Or, hey, let me see the top card of your deck and you can play it or things like that. This game is, I would say, in the pure sense, 100% purely cooperative. And it's fun and it feels great. The only downside of the game at all is that it's pretty much just stock artwork. It's not anything pretty. Mm-hmm. They just like took little skills it's and movie, put them on yeah. cards and wait goes. Uh, but the gameplay is so much fun. It, it is is that's that's one of the reasons why I picked it. It's one of the reasons why I bought the game. And I am one of those that at this point, it's if I buy a game, I have to super like it because yeah. chances are like the gaming group that I hang out with, with like Andrew and everybody else, somebody else is going to have a game. I won't need to buy it yet. If I don't want it in my collection, of course. Um, but someday I'll, I'll probably buy more. That's getting off topic. But anyway, if I have to really like a game to buy it and I bought this game and I fell in love with it and we played it and then Andrew bought it. And that's just kind of how it is. It's like you play a game, and you really love it. Then you end up buying it. Like there's some games that we've played that he bought that I'm like, God, I want that in my collection. I mean, I know that if I don't want to play it, I can be like, Hey, Andrew, but I want it in my collection too, you know, cause it's, it's awesome. Like, so that's one of the games that I put in my, my top three. And, and like, Oh, it was hard for me to like not put it on because it was, it's just so good. Yeah. As a testament to Harry Potter, Hogwarts battle or battle for Hogwarts, um it it is it's infectious like like shanine said she bought it i played it i was like i want a copy of this i bought it then i played it with like another group of people and i had a co-worker that i played it with they went out and bought it now they're playing it with like their kids and other people so it's just like it's it's that good of a game it's it's really really that easy to play and it's that fun and it's got an expansion for it that makes it like super super tough that uh i don't believe we actually even finished the expansion did we, we didn't, um no i think we did i think we finished boxes. yeah Is i think we actually boxes? did it took us a while but because that last one i think we had to do a couple times but i think we actually did complete it and then we played the uh, uh the it's not cooperative but the series of harry potter the two player harry potter game right that that brings me to my next point before we move on because i'm always yeah i'm i'm always thinking of people watching with their their cell phone on the amazon thinking oh maybe i'll look up this game or maybe i'll go on youtube this is um harry potter what's the official term battle for hogwarts uh hogwarts battle hogwarts battle um, hold up the yep. box one more time, if you do you have, if you have it. Oh, sorry, it fell. I apologize. I made a big oh. little noise. So yeah, artwork looks good there, but that's the game that we're talking about. The and the reason why I'm making this kind of a point, why I'm stopping, is because there is a Harry Potter game by the same company, USAopoly, that is a two-player only that is Harry Potter Defense Against the Dark Arts, something like that, that is a two-player only game that plays a lot like Star Realms or, um, uh, I'm blanking on, you know, I don't know, just competitive deck builders, um, things like that. And it looks kind of the same. The artwork looks kind of similar, and it's by the same company. So that's why I just wanted to make note of that. It's like, if you're looking for it, the one we're talking about is that brown one. There's another one that's white that's just two-player only that would, let's just say it wasn't on my list. <laughs> it wasn't cooperative, <laughs> but it wouldn't have been on my list. <laughs> it's two-player head-to-head. It's not a cooperative game. Okay, so let's keep like moving right along, getting off the Harry Potter track because i know i'm a fan and i know you're a fan and so we could talk about harry potter and like harry potter games a lot and so we'll move on to my 
number three. This game was um, nominated for the Spiel des Jahres in 2015. It was originally introduced to me as a, I believe the word was called a Dexploration game. Yeah. Using the words an amalgamation of exploration and deck as in like a deck of cards. So you're exploring through a deck of cards. It is uh, not a perfect game. It is a cooperative game. I do like it from because of the uh, narrative aspect to it. And there's a lot that you can get out of this game. There's a lot that you can love about this game. There's a lot you can hate about this game. But it's called Time Stories. Oh, yeah. Get a good shot. You can't really see because it's a lot of white. But yeah, Time Stories looks kind of like this. Um, in Time Stories, so yeah, it looks, looks quite cool. Um, in Time Stories, it is a combination of Choose Your Own Adventure and MacGyver. Or not MacGyver. Uh, what was the other one? Quantum Leap. Sorry, my bad. So Quantum Leap and Choose Your Own Adventure. So in Time Stories, it takes place in the future where you are working for in a time agency. You're a time agent. And what they do is what you do in the game is every scenario and there are multiple scenarios packs that you can go out and and buy some of them <clears throat> excuse me some of them are good some of them not so much and that's why i'm kind of like it's a game you could love but you can also not love it um anywho they basically you have a boss his name's bob and bob gives you assignments and he basically puts you in these pods that you can see here he puts you in these pods and they send you back in time to different time frames different parts of the world one of them is actually set in wisconsin in 1992 and your job is to stop something from happening or to prevent the kidnapping of a girl to alter the timeline. Very quantum leap, basically ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so as you do that, you work together, but it's a choose your own adventure where you go and you do things and you run out of time. And when you run out of, out of time, you kind of reset. Um, this is heavily uh, borrowed from, or the movie borrowed from source code, which is a Jake Gyllenhaal movie where he just kind of keeps reliving the same, scenarios um and as he keeps relieving reliving them um he kind of learns and so he learns how to be more efficient with his time edge of tomorrow with tom cruise is another movie that does that same sort of like keeps repeating the same things this game time stories replicates that same thing where you go through a certain scenario in a, in a house or a hospital or whatever the thing may be. And you go, okay, we don't need to go over there because we talked to that guy and he could sell us a shotgun if we need it, if we want to take the time, but we need to go here because we need the key to free this person here. And every time you play it, there's cognition. And so using some reader response theory, you can't approach the same situation the same way twice because we're all cognitive. And so as you play through what they call runs, um, every run that you go through, you start becoming more efficient and you maximize your time until you get to the end of the scenario. At the end of the scenario, you win or lose as a way to score and stuff like that. The base game that I just held up comes with one scenario in it called the Asylum, which is probably the best. And then there are like, I think eight or nine uh, packs that you can basically buy that you can plug in to play different modules while you're playing back like as a pharaoh in Egyptian times. You can be a Wisconsin in the 90s. Um, what are some of the others? A uh, ship during 1990, uh, 19, uh, World War I, like 1914, you're on a ship or whatever. Um, there's a whole bunch it's of different ones. Hollywood there's, like, one. There's one that's in the, like, yeah, Hollywood in the 80s. Um, there's one that's like during the Crusades, like in, I think, Italy or maybe Spain. There's a bunch of different ones that you can put in. There's a lot to like about it. There's a lot to dislike about it. I'm not going to go through all the huge pros and cons about this game because it's just not the space for, for it right now. Um, and Shani <laughs> knows what they, and Shani knows what they are because I've talked oh, yeah. about it a lot. <laughs> I love time stories. I think it should have won the Spear of the Shares in 2015, it lost out to code names. And so that's that. 
Um, that's about it. So Time Stories is a good one to play if you're wanting kind of a story, kind of an exploration, sort of like you're being sent back in time to the, like the Egyptian pharaohs or you're being sent to Hollywood in the 80s and like everyone's on cocaine and, you know, some of them are good, some of them not so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. So that's my number three, uh, Time Stories. And Time Stories think- is by Space Cowboys, which is a French uh, company, which ironically has already been mentioned on this list yes, because they also, make, they also make Unlock. Yep. And so k- kudos to Space Cowboys for having two games on our little video tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I like Tim I like Tim Stories. Aren't they coming out with like a two po- version two point or something? Yes, they have, I believe. It's out or it's coming out, or some people have been previewing it and showing it off on YouTube. It's just Time Stories two point and I don't know. I'm not really jazzed about it yet. I don't I think they messed around. From what I can tell, they messed around with kind of how it works. But anyways, that's just totally different, different topic. Yeah. But yes, yeah, well, maybe we can check it out sometime. Yeah, I like it. It's a good, good, good pick, Andrew. I like time stories. I've always enjoyed like the aspect of like discovery. That's another thing that I kind of enjoyed. Was like, oh, we're gonna go here. Oh, hey, we can talk to, we can talk to that guy. We can talk to that girl. We can talk to that drunk laying down there. Okay, where do we want to go? Who? Where do we want to spend our time on? Because that you have to make moves. You're gonna spend time. Yeah. You want to spend your time talking to the drunk that's uh, laying in the ground on the ground, or do you want to talk to yeah, the yeah, the beautiful you know, Jezebel walking down the street and you yeah. know, carrying a gun or whatever? It's 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 awesome. You find out new things, and then I, I it's fun. you find it's, all uh, it's, you find all the red herrings. Yeah, you, yep. You, yeah, you, you spend all this time just to do things. Let me tell you, everyone out there watching, don't mess with the plunger. <laughs> bad, bad news. Bad news, and you will laugh. Everyone will laugh at you. But I know that's ambiguous. But it's it's funny if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're essentially just managing time. Just to be like, how yeah. much can we get? how can we maximize what time we have um, before I know I said it before I'm going to recommend it again uh, source code and edge of tomorrow are two movies that are really if you like those movies if you want a game that kind of gives that feeling of like groundhog's day sort of thing um, I really recommend those especially source code is one of my mm-hmm. favorite movies and Jake Gyllenhaal of course is awesome in it so beautiful number two all right my number two is pretty family friendly actually um it <laughs> is by and as if the others Wong. weren't right <laughs> well they were but this one is, is it's super easy it's, it's it's small compared in comparison to the other games that i had so it's a uh, easy to like take with you anywhere um it is by anton bauza and it is a game where you're racing a clock to build some fireworks and launch some rockets. Mm. However, you cannot say anything. You don't see your hand. Everybody else sees your hand. And they have to get you to lay down the cards in order, one through five, and build some fireworks in Hanabi. Uh, this is a, it's super simple, super easy. I enjoyed it the first time I ever played it because I kind of like the, the, oh, hey, okay, you have a card and you can give hints to everybody around who has cards. You have to give hints to people so that they play the right card in order of one through five for your fireworks to shoot off because they're color cord- coded, coded. And you have some hints that you can give, and you but you have um, you have to make the right move in order to use the, the hint. Or excuse me, you have to use the hint. Oh my goodness! Don't you hate that? It's late. Andrew failed to mention that we're recording this late, so we yeah. had full days, and so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's we're doing this. It's the middle of the night. I'm recording this. I've had a full day of work and Shanine's had a full day. And so, yeah, so it's, it's Hanabi it's, actually isn't, 
it wasn't on my list. Yeah, I don't. You know me. I don't like. I don't like Hanabi. Um, it's and I don't know why. Maybe it's just the simplicity. But then it's like ugh, there's other simplistic card games, Antoine Bowser games that I do mm-hmm. love. Um, but essentially, like the whole getting a handful of cards, but then holding them backwards so like you can't see them, for lack of better terms, being completely politically incorrect um indian what people would know indian poker i guess where you you don't see the card it's kind of like that you have like a handful of cards that you don't see that everyone else can see so everyone else is kind of looking around and looking at what they have yeah trying to pick like okay and i'll say i'll grab a card and say like this one and you can either say what the number or the color so be like this one is red and so then she has to remember that that one's red. And then someone else could say, this one is a four. And there's more to it than that that adds a lot of tension because you're trying to play cards in sequential order or in their color suit, sort of like solitaire type thing, lining <laughs> them up. And if you're wrong, help me, Shane, three times there's or something? Three, four times. Four times, then like the thing blows up or something. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, you basically you're, 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 you lose yeah, basically yeah. but yeah the goal is to try to get as many of the uh colors i believe there's i want to say four white green red yellow blue five sorry um you want to try to get them all in uh in a wild there's a wild color that has all colors if you want to want to um challenge but you want to get them all in order like andrew said sequentially one through five and in the same color to score at the end of the game. So you're all trying to work together to get all these done without blowing them up. Um, It's fun. It's, it's a classic. I know, you know, lots of people that are like, Oh, Hey, you want to play Hanabi? It's easy to pull a lot. And so that's pretty much why I I had it on my list because I figured I needed to, I wanted to put a game on it. That was one of those games. It's like, I can put it in my purse and, you know, if I'm ever around a whole bunch of people, like, hey, you guys want to play some cards? Let's play this game. It's great. It's easy to learn, and it's super fun. I am definitely in the minority here, and I have my hand <laughs> raised. I know I'm in the minority because people love this game, They, or at least they did love it. It's an older game now, but, man, it was really popular. It won, like, crazy amount of awards. It, it put Antoine Bauza on the map in order to go on and do – seven wonders which people also love um what's the one with the panda the little panda thing and well toki toki uh yeah I think um, that's it. and then tokaido which is another like kind of traveling the japanese coast and stuff all of those games are like great people love them mm-hmm. he's really on the map for being a designer and hanabi is kind of where he got his start i this is was not on my list I'm in the minority. I do not care for this game. I wouldn't really recommend it. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But, yeah, it's a it's a great pick, I guess, because it is uh, simple, and it's won a bunch of awards. So, I guess, what do I know? <laughs> so, num- it's not my- your style of game. It's, it's just one of those things that's just not your style of game. That's, just, you know, there's some games out there that, you know, we all have that where this this is just not my style of game, you know? And it's not a matter of like, I played it once and had a negative negative experience. And so I'm just like, I don't like that game. Because there are some games where I've had, that's happened. I've played Mm -hmm. it multiple times. I've At one point, I understood the rules and got the strategy. I think it has to do with here because I have a very terrible memory. So when people tell me like the cards, like this one here in the middle, this one's red. Okay, cool. And then other stuff happens in the game and I'm just, my brain wanders and I'm like, I'm going to play, oh, oh crap. I forgot if this was, <laughs> was this one the red one or was this one the number four? And then people just are staring at me because they can see the cards and they're like. <laughs> and so it's, it's just not cognitively, it's not, or it might be a little bit too much uh, for me, but Moving on to my number two, and so getting within the two and one, these are probably, like I said, the easier games to get into. 
to pick up to learn the the rules to play. They're probably shorter. Actually, I know they're shorter, especially with oh, Arkham Horror on the list. But um, the next one for me, uh, if I have it here, the my number two is a cooperative game that is by Days of Wonder. It's an older game. It's probably the old, oldest game on my list where you're playing Knights of the of King Arthur's Court, and it is called uh, Shadows Over Camelot. Um, 2005, I, I want to say, is the date. So this is this is pretty an older game. It got a lot of buzz because it was one of the first kind of innovative cooperative games. Not the first cooperative game. The first one was actually a Lord of the Rings game from like way back in like 2000. Um, Shadows over Camelot cooperative game you're picking characters for like percival and you know king arthur and characters like that and you're all going out uh doing these quests and separating Mm -hmm. and you're trying to keep the picks and the saxons uh um away the armies and fight them but you're also trying to search for the holy grail and there's a dragon that might show up and Mm -hmm. you can battle the black knight and so there's all these on the board it's just everywhere all these different different places you can go Um, let's see if I can get a shot of like, you know, there's all these different, there's this other, so pretty. other boards. I mean, there's other boards you can go to and like play cards and there's all these different things. And there's siege engines, like you said, that are amassing at your castle. And on this, in this game, you always have to do something bad meaning like you have to progress the game in a negative way by playing like a black card, which does something bad or putting a siege engine, which if you get like 20 of them, you lose the game. And so you're always like, okay, it's fine to place out now at the beginning of the game. But at the end of the game, it's like, Oh, you just placed our 19th siege engine. And there's ways to take them off, but it's, it's a really, really good, Mm-hmm. I think it's a solid game. Uh, oh, yeah. It's easy to teach because a lot of the quests are just playing cards. And the cards mimic, um, not the cards, sorry, the card play mimics poker. So a lot of times in order to get this quest, you need two of one kind and two of another kind, like two pair or like a full house. You need like three threes and two twos or something like that. So people can kind of wrap their head around that idea of having sets of things like kind of poker sets. And so that makes the game a lot easier to teach. It's pretty super simplistic. It's a it's an older game. It doesn't get any love anymore, but it did probably 15 years ago, maybe when it came out. And we still play this, and I still play it, and I still will play it, and I, I enjoy playing it. So fine. And there's some expansions for it and stuff like that. I just have the base game. Oh. That's really what I've been excited with um, playing is Shadows over Camelot I highly recommend this one and this one is again uh to repeat myself it's getting on the easier side so this one's pretty much anyone can pick up if you have families teenagers this this one could be just a family game night Uh, I would not necessarily recommend that for Robinson Crusoe, Arkham Horror, (laughs) Time Stories not so much family game night but Shadows over Camelot definitely definitely an easier game Still fun, lots of tension. You don't, I mean, we don't win all the time, Shanine. We actually we don't, right? Most of, yep. the, time, most of the time, we don't win. Um, but it is, it is fun to play, yeah, because you have to get like seven white swords and you can't get black swords. If you fail, uh, mid- those black cards, you get the, too, black, those, yeah, uh, the black, the black cards, uh, all, they're bad. all bad, they're just totally all bad. But it's it's it is it's so much fun and there's a there's a trader aspect in it so if you want to play a little bit like that's that's uh mm-hmm. still play cooperative but you'll have one person like t- trying to take yeah. the game um, you can put in the trader as well it, it's it's it, yeah. we play both ways um, I that's fun it's super I, I almost I actually almost had this on my list as well um, it was on my long list. Because I was like, oh, yeah, Shadows Over Camelot. It was so fun. Like, the first time, it's so easy to learn that the first time I played it, we played it at a a family restaurant at, like, I don't know, I think it was, like, 10 o'clock at night or something. It was you and I and another one of our friends who had moved away. And, I don't know, we had, there was, like, 
five or six of us and we played this game there. It was so much fun. And it was like, oh, this is, this, I, oh, oh. and then of course we lose it. I'm like, oh, oh why, why that black, oh, that last black card. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the, a good, good pick, Andrew. Great the, pick. The variant is, um, uh, the, sorry, the, the trader is a kind of a variant you can play with. The game recommends that you start off just as, like I said, a purely cooperative game. And then if there is, I should say there are uh, rules and rule sets of if you want to play with the trader that comes in the base box. But I still picked it as just a fully cooperative game because that's kind of how you want to play it out of the box. And yeah. then if you get bored with it, if you want to be able to get into that mood of like pointing fingers and accusing people of working like secretly, secretly working against the team, um, you can play with that. Not my favorite variant to play with. Um, the whole semi-cooperative, as, as I mentioned before, but Shadows Over Camelot is um, my number two. Good pick. Great pick. God, I love that game. Ugh. So Some before we go into together. our number ones, um, do we want to try to do any predictions? I mean, I know you said that you have you, all the games, correct? Yes, I have all the games. And you, she did say, I'm so I'm kind of like meta- gaming here with this because <laughs> you said that there were ones that i haven't played while well, i played hanabi i think i played well i've played unlock but i haven't played the unlocks that you referenced mm -hmm. um i naturally want to say that it's pan some some version of pandemic whether if it be a, a legacy version or a dice like a dice game version and so i'm gonna heads Hedge my bets and say some version of Pandemic for your number one. It is Rob Davio. And it it's is gotta, Pandemic. It's got to be a legacy then. It Good old legacy. Davio. What season did you pick? Season one. Great game. Oh, uh, so brilliant. good. Yep. It Great doesn't game. matter. I didn't know what version. I have two different pandemics here. I have this and I have the cure. And I like the cure. Um, the, the original pandemic is the dice game. Yeah, the cure is the dice game. Yeah. And I like the original version. Um, and this just takes it to a whole new level. It's adding, like, you can change the board, you get to sticker it and change it. If you pandemic, um, you're, it's basically like, you know, an outbreak of a virus. And we're kind of in that pandemic stage right now when this is getting recorded uh, with the whole COVID thing um, but it's pretty much what it is you have different cities and different colored cubes that represent viruses and you're trying to stop them from outbreaking and there's a storyline behind it which I'm not going to give too much away because it is a legacy game and I don't want to ruin it for anybody um, no. but I've played this through twice with two different groups and I would play it again with another group. It's so, so good. It's, it's, you know, it just takes that your basic pandemic to the whole new level with the legacy. It's the first legacy game I ever played. And the minute I got done with it, the minute we, because it, um, Andrew and I played this one through, um, I was like, is there another one? And at that point, they were just releasing season two. And I was like, get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. It was, it's so good. that when yeah. season two came out, it was like, yes. And now season three is coming sometime in the future-ish, maybe, hopefully. I hope yeah. so. Because it's, it's, a, it's a great game. You, know, just, it's, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I just need one more card for us to win. We just need to get one yellow. We can cure that last virus. And every time we flip it, we get like a blue card or we'll get into the last epidemic and then it's like, oh, everything outbreaks and we lose. Yeah, one turn away. It's like one turn away. So bad, but so good. So you know? tense, like just real tense. Lots of tension. It's never a game that's a blowout like – um. Like, we've had Robinson Crusoe just be like, blow out. Like, why did we even set this game up? Like, we didn't even have a chance. Uh, this yep. War of Mine, which is not yeah. being talked about tonight, is another one that's like, we didn't even have a chance. 
pandemic yeah. pandemic either the regular game or especially the legacy game always creates those moments where it's like mm-hmm. if we can just survive like your turn and then we win on your turn and it's like you'll pull a card it's like we have to pull six cards and so and we don't need any blue cards and you'll pull like black 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 yellow and it'll be like blue like oh it's so we were so close to winning which is what a cooperative game, a cooperative game really should do it should really give you that feeling of like we did stuff we tried we were really close we were just maybe we made one wrong move or something your pawn wasn't in the right spot at the right time or whatever and that's what makes some really good cooperative games just that amount of tension of like i felt like we had a chance let's set it up again because we might be able to do it next mm-hmm. time yeah because we were so close unlike robinson crusoe where sometimes you're like not even close <laughs> Yep, the Z-Man games uh, produces it so good though. Oh, I can't, I can't say enough. I just, and the box is really pretty, and the artwork. I like the artwork. I think it's pretty. Yep. Um, two different types of artwork. There's the red and blue, uh, mm-hmm. which is For the same. One. Yep. So season one has red and blue. Season two has yellow and black. Same game for those of you that want to search it up on Amazon or whatever. Um, same same game at least season one and then season two those are different games but the same game whether if you get the red or blue it's just whatever color you prefer for artwork um but it's the same game inside so don't yep. be th- both don't be thrown by like there's a red one and a blue season one do i need to get both of them just get whichever one strikes your fancy for yep. the artwork yep. and for the coloring you're red or you're blue, it doesn't matter. Just the game on the inside is yep. still the same. You're yep. still going to go through the same, same, the same story. Um, I have a confession to make. Uh-oh. When it comes to talking about Pandemic Legacy Season 1, I have played Season 1 four times. And I have just recently, um, at the time of filming this, I have just recently finished a huge crammed in season one like (laughs) all within two weeks with a group um the first time i played it was um just a two player with someone else the second time i played it was with shanine we both finished it the third time i played it with shanine and two others and we ended up finishing it and then the fourth time that i played through it was very very recently at the time of recording this and i just i can't say enough about it every single time it's just like there's so much tension there's you get to upgrade your your stuff at the end i mean the legacy aspect to an already stellar game um and i'm sure shanine would just uh, agree with me that just even putting regular pandemic as your number one you know like that's a great recommendation yep absolutely you can get it at walmart you can get it at target or whatever it's very it's on yep very easy game to learn it's easy to play it doesn't take too terribly long maybe 60 minutes up there depending if you're playing the legacy version then you're going to probably be up towards that 60 minute area and the game scales so you can make it easy you can make it medium you can make it like super hard um can't say enough good things about this game and a lot of people out there like it it's a very very popular game especially the the legacy game season one and season two yep thumbs up so yeah, so having just played season one, I have like so much to say about it, but we're just going to leave it at that <laughs> so that we can have the video wrap up at some point and, we'll and not just so talk good. about how great season one is. And season two is great. I mean, get one, play it. Get two, play it. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy legacy games. Play it two player. Play it three player. Play it four player. Just find a group and just start playing. Just get through the story. Go through it slow read all the cards, get the flavor text, scratch off the cards, sticker the board. Oh, yeah. Do all those fun things. Just have fun with it. Um, it's so much fun. So, yeah, great pick. Uh, I did not pick Pandemic, um, but it would be my number one. And the only reason I didn't pick it for my number one is because, like I said probably earlier in the video, as I was really trying to think off the beaten path, like stuff that might not be on everyone's list, You know, um, so, uh, but I have no qualms against putting it as number one, as my number one. 
But Janine, do you have any other guesses, I guess, since you know it's not any pandemic game? Well, my initial and, thought was... And keep in mind, it's number one, so it is what I would consider on the lighter end of my five through one. Marks accessible, easier to play, easy to teach, not long. Well, then it's not going to be what I thought it was going to be. Well, go ahead. Just, let's talk. I thought it was going to be a card game. Um, like, like, oh, say Arkham Horror card, the LCG for Arkham Horror. That for sure that was going to be it. Nope. Hmm. No, that's that game is definitely not easy to learn and is not <laughs> short to play. As you and I both found out, it's not a, a short game to play. Not anymore, anyways. Does it have lots of different varieties? Nope. Just one. So it's not going to be legendary. By Ravensburger Games. I know that doesn't help. Yeah, that doesn't help me. Anyways, it has to deal with a lot <laughs> of the old universal picture creepy horror films and the old like universal monsters. And Oh, the, I know what it is now. The game is called Horrified. Uh, Horrified. And so Horrified is what I would call a a Halloween version of Pandemic which is why it's my number one in, instead of Pandemic. Although I definitely would put Pandemic as my number one too, because as you just heard us, we, we love that game. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking off the beaten path. I was thinking like, nah, let's put something else other than Pandemic. And I think that Pandemic, or I'm sorry, that Horrified is the best facsimile to Pandemic. It's just, it's pretty close. Would you agree, Shanine? I mean, we've both played this. You've played it. Um it's got that same kind yeah. of feel of like four actions on your turn, moving around a board, trying to mitigate things that happen on it to get them off the board. There's different monsters mm -hmm. that change depending on how you want to set up. If you want to play with three monsters to defeat or four monsters, you can always shuffle them, but it feels weight wise. Like com when I mean complexity, it feels like pandemic. Correct. Yeah, I would, I would, I would think so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This may be one that we'll have to. I mean, it's a good game. Uh, it's a good, it's a good game. Um, I had a kind of bad experience, but it was still a good game overall. Well, it was the thing that I when I was thinking about. Oh man, I can't put Pandemic down as my number one. That's just we're we're gonna match too much. So I was thinking, what's the other? What's another game that would be? pandemic worthy as far as the complexity and horrified was the first one that came to mind this oh, yeah. one definitely this one i mean is, i would like to give it a second shot you know he'll play it again and and see how it goes i, so I the, know go ahead oh this one is one to five players ages 10 and up so i mean families teenagers 10 11 12 year olds and it takes 60 minutes to play according to the box and so you're basically saving this town. And so that's kind of, the, kind of the map, yep, from a bunch of monsters that are running amok and scaring people and scaring the villagers. And so you're taking on different uh, monsters from like Dracula, Frankenstein, and his bride, the creature from the Black Lagoon, the Invisible Man, uh, Werewolf, um, all those old like... 1920s or whatever like universal pictures like classic monster films and things like that it feels very much like pandemic so pat on the back for me i think that's a pretty good choice oh, yeah. as a supplement Definitely. for for pandemic as my number one and so that's our list as uh i said at the beginning we'll kind of bookend this video is this was really tough there are a lot oh, of so good, tough good cooperative games out there. Some of them involve some narratives. Some of them are just games like Horrified or, uh, yeah, Horrified or Shadows Over Camelot um, mm -hmm. or Magic Maze. Just good games to play. Good games that kind of build some group thing, get communication going, especially Pandemic. 
pandemic legacy, you definitely need to like talk about like what you can do on your turn and what they can do. You know, it's essentially, and I've said this before, it, they're essentially a puzzle, but not in the way that pe most people would think of puzzles as in like jigsaw puzzles or Tetris puzzles, not like that, but puzzles as far as like, there's a way to solve this, but you're using all these people or you're playing with all these people to kind of do the right moves to be able to, to get the objective, to solve the puzzle. And so I'm just going to kind of really quick um, do some honorable mentions. If you have any Shanine as well, okay. um, just to cap out the video and then we'll kind of sign off because it's late and we both got to get to bed because tomorrow's yes. another day. And so um, some of these I've talked about before, uh load up my list uh did you have any shanine um i have code names duet um which is you know on my top for two player and, and it's just it's a, a great game but it's cooperative because we're you're trying to get each other to say the words so you can move on to the next city in the the, the game um and without hitting the assassin card and super and, tough yeah. Oh, because, like, the words that I see are different than the words that, you know, Andrew would see. And, you know, we both have different um, assassin words. And, oh, it's super difficult because you're like, oh, maybe I should pick that word. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like there's a running theme to this video. It's, like, super tough. I think the title of the, the video needs to be, like, super tough. <laughs> like, top five super tough cooperative games because we've said it about 18 times tonight of like super tough brutal game like oh it's so hard to win and yet we're recommending them we're putting them in a video saying hey search this one up go find it on amazon go order it go look it up on youtube i'll take the brutal you're not gonna win but go ahead and look it up as long as you have fun losing that's what matters right it's just a bunch of masochists like hey we love this pain we think you'll love it too but if, if any of you out there do pick up some of these games and figure out a strategy email me okay like especially robinson caruso um oh yeah definitely that's probably the most brutal one on, on the list i think is that um so i'm gonna just i'm not gonna explain all the games and, some of them have um, been I want to try the crew. I haven't tried it yet, but I heard it's a great oh. cooperative game. So okay. I just wanted to mention because I thought about it and I'm like, oh, I really want to try it, but I never want to put it on the list because I haven't tried it yet. But one of these days, I like co-op yeah. games. I'll, I'll play it. Any other ones you want to throw out? Um, I don't have my list with me, so I'm going to say maybe the mind. Um, but. That's pretty much it that I can think of. Okay, I'm just gonna go through um, my list really quick. I'm not gonna sit and talk about every single game and describe yeah. it, uh, just for sake of brevity and you know signing off and saying thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. um, some of these have already been mentioned. Uh, some of them haven't. Um, one of them on here I haven't even played, but I know it's a co-op game and I feel like it's pretty good. Um, but I'll mention that when I say it, so you guys can just judge on your own. Go look up some YouTube videos. Okay, so um, on my short list that I didn't pick, but I do recommend for people, uh, is a game called Legends of Andor. Great cooperative game. Uh, this yep. War of Mine, which we've already talked about as just a brutal game. That's, I mean, your people just, they die. Uh, Magic <laughs> Maze, which has already been mentioned tonight. Uh, pandemic, which has already been mentioned tonight. Uh, first, Marsh, first Martians, if I can talk, has already been mentioned. It's basically Robinson Crusoe, but you're on Mars. You're trying to survive mm -hmm. on Mars. And there's an app that's integrated, but it's same designer, same company, same kind of game flow, but just a little, it's a diff, not a little different theme. It's a very different theme. Um, the Harry Potter deck builder, which has already been mentioned. Uh, a storybook game, and these are all storybook games, Komonauts, Stuff Fables, and the one that I have not played is called Aftermath, but I feel like there's some good vibes behind that one. And so I'm going to, why not? I'm going to go ahead and recommend that one as well. And then a last one, which is a, a 
cooperative game, again, with an app that you play, which has a real-time aspect to it. It's called XCOM, the board game. And so there you go. That's my really brief shotgun of things that I had on my list. I recommend all of those games, just depending on what kind of flavor you like, what kind of theme you like, whether if you plan on playing with two players, four players. Um, if you ever are inclined to find out what's the best for you and your group, you can always shoot us a message and we can Absolutely. whatever you're looking for, what kind of games you like or themes you like or what kind of play, like if you have two players, okay, well, these mm -hmm. ones are really good at two players. And so you can always find us on Facebook. We have the profile as per my ability on Facebook. Obviously this YouTube channel, you can leave comments below. You can hit subscribe just to get everything from us. We are also on the Twitter machine at as per my ability and on Instagram, you can see like photos and pictures and stuff of all the games that we've been playing and enjoying and stuff like that. And that's it as per my ability as well. And so all of our social media stuff, get in touch with us, get on the Twitter machine, stop by and say hi, because we love it when you say hi. And so that, that's going to be it for our video. We're going to wrap it up. So I'm, I'm Andrew Davidson with As For My Ability. I'm Shanine with As For My Ability. Thanks everyone for watching and I will see you all at the next video.